video, we will explore an example relating to the binomial distribution, how to calculate a few probabilities, how to calculate conditional probabilities, and to calculate a few other quantities such as the mean. So we have one example here relating to the same scenario, and the scenario is, suppose that in Victoria, 21% of all 18-year-olds do not have a driver's license. We take a random sample of 30 18-year-olds, so that is the scenario there. Part A says, find the probability correct to three decimal places that exactly eight 18-year-olds in the sample do not have a driver's license. So the first thing we need to do to write on our paper is actually define the distribution. So we'll choose capital X to represent our random variable for the number of 18 year olds without a driver's license in Victoria. We then need to specify what type of distribution this is. So we'll say that X is distributed as a binomial. So the, the distributed as symbol is like a tilde. So X is distributed as a binomial random variable with parameters of N equals 30. So we have a sample size of 30. And with a probability of success of 21% or 0 0.21, which is what you write down. If you have a look at the graph of the distribution, you can see that the distribution is primarily um, skewed towards the right, and we have a peak sitting at around the 5 or 6 mark. So to actually answer part A's question, we need to first of all go to menu, then to probability, and then scroll all the way down to distributions, and then scroll all the way down to binomial PDF. We're using binomial PDF because we're wanting the probability of one specific value of x. So binomial PDF, what you do is you enter the n value, which is 30, press tab, then print enter the probability of success, which is p, which is 0 0.21, and we want the x value, which is 8. We want exactly 8 18 rolls. Hit enter, and you get the answer there. Now, remember that we want the answer correct to three decimal places. So on your paper, you would write PRX equals 8 is equal to 0 0.124. Remember, the 3 rounds up to 4. Moving on to part B then. Part B says, find the probability correct to four decimal places that at least one-third of the 18-year-olds in the sample do not have a driver's license. So one of the parts in this question is it's not stated exactly what number it is. It's stated as a proportion. So what, you, what, you, what you'll need to do is first calculate what one-third of that sample is. You can obviously do it in your head, but if you'd like to do it on the calculator, you can press Control divide to get one third multiplied by 30 and you end up with 10. Obviously that was an easy one to do uh, in your head, but with harder questions you can obviously do that in your calculator. So our, our desired probability is that we want at least one third. So the word at least gives us a clue that we want a binomial CDF. To get to binomial CDF you press menu then 5, which takes you to probability, then 5 again, which takes you to distributions, and then you can scroll all the way down until you get to binomial CDF. This time, again, it asks you for the same parameters. So use the same parameters as before, which is 30, 0 0.21. A lower bound is going to be 10, which is the result we found before, and the upper bound is going to be the number of the sample, which is 30. Hit enter twice, and you end up with that as your answer. So the probability correct to four decimal places would be 0 0.0806. So when you write that on your paper, you would write PR of X is greater than or equal to 10 is equal to 0 0.0806. Let's go to part C then. So part C says, if it is known that at least one-third of the sample do not have a driver's license, what is the probability that at least one-half of the sample do not have a driver's license? 
So the first part of the question which says if it is known, that is leading you to the fact that we actually have a conditional probability of yes. And the conditional, the condition that we have in this question is that at least one third of the sample do not have his driver's license. So that information is already known to us and we just want the probability that at least one half of the sample do not have a driver's license. So when you write this out on your paper, you would write PR of X greater than or equal to 15, given that, so the vertical line, X is greater than or equal to 10. So that is the initial part of the question. You then need to apply the conditional probability formula, which you can find on your formula sheet, which is PR of X greater than or equal to 15, intersected with X greater than or equal to 10, and that whole thing is divided by PR X greater than or equal to 10. If you analyze the numerator, you would see that the numerator simplifies to PR X greater than, greater than or equal to 15, and the denominator is simply PR X greater than or equal to 10. So we already have the denominator, which is the PR X greater than or equal to 10. So all we need to do is calculate the probability that PR is X greater than or equal to 15. Instead of repeating the same procedure like we did last time, you can just press the up arrow twice, press enter, which copies it into the entry line, and just change that 10 into a 15. So what that does is it recalculates the probability, but just with a lower bound of 15. Then what you can do is you can take the result that we just found, copy it to the entry line, divide it by the result we found previously, hit enter, and then press control enter because we want the answer in decimal form. So we get an answer here of 0 0.005, correct to three decimal places. Moving on to part D. So part D says, find the mean and variance of the number of 18-year-olds in the sample who do not have a driver's license. This one, you don't necessarily need, need the CAS for it, but we can use the CAS anyway just to verify our answers. So from the formula sheet, you will see that the mean of a binomial distribution is the value of n times p. So n is 30 multiplied by p, which is 0 0.21, and you hit enter, and we end up with an answer of 63 on 10. If you prefer, you can write that as 6.3, which you get from going control enter. Likewise, if you want to get the variance from the formula sheet, that will tell you n, which is 30, times p, which is 0 0.21, times 1 minus p, which is 1 minus 0 0.21. Hit enter, we end up with that answer. Alternatively, you can press control enter to end up with 4.977. Okay, moving on to part E. This is, find the probability correct to four decimal places that the number of 18-year-olds in the sample without a driver's license are within two standard deviations of the mean. So we have to do a couple of calculations before we start typing anything into the calculator. So the first thing is you might want to calculate the standard deviation. Now we know that the standard deviation is simply the square root of the variance. So let's go and find that. Control and the x squared gives us the square root. Press up to, to copy and paste the previous answer, which was the variance. Hit enter and we get that as our as our standard deviation. If you'd like, you can approximate that as well, but preferably we'll use the exact value in, in further calculations. Once you've calculated the standard deviation, we then need to calculate what the lower and upper bound of our particular interval is. So the lower bound of our interval is two standard deviations below the mean. So you can go back to the mean, which was here, which was 6.3, and subtract two times the standard deviation, which is there, and that right there is the lower bound. Let's control enter that just to get an idea of approximately where that is. Likewise, we want to find the upper bound of that interval, and what you can do is instead of typing all that again, 
just copy and paste the previous answer, change the minus to a plus, and control enter gives us 10.76. So when we go through and perform the uh, calculations, we know that the probability that x is between these two values um, would be between two integer values. So if x is, must be greater than 1.8 and less than 10.76, that simplifies to PR of x being greater than or equal to 2 and less than or equal to 10. So now that we have that information, we can go and do a calculation, which is menu 5, 5, and then binomial CDF, if you remember from before, was B. So again, we have 30 trials. Success was 0.21. Lower bound was 2. Upper bound was 10. Hit enter twice, and we end up with an answer correct to four decimal places of 0 0.9567. Okay, moving on to our final question. And this is an inverse binomial question. The newest version of the operating system, which is 4.4, has an inverse binomial um, command inside it. And this part of the question will show you how to use that. So the scenario has now changed slightly. We're moving over to, to New South Wales. So suppose that in New South Wales, 12% of all 18-year-olds do not have a driver's license. N 18-year-olds from New South Wales are chosen at random. Our job is to find the least value of n, such that the probability that at least three do not have a driver's license exceeds 0 0.95. So what we might do is start by defining this distribution, because it's different from the previous one. So we'll use y this time, and we let y equal the number of 18-year-olds without a driver's license in New South Wales. We know that y is distributed as a binomial distribution, with an unknown sample size, but with a known probability of success, which is 0 0.12. So writing the statement in the question as a mathematical statement, it would be PR of y greater than or equal to 3 is greater than 0.95. Now, inverse binomial on the calculator requires a probability statement to be written as, as a y less than or equal to. So we need to convert. Um, the probability statement into 1 minus PR of Y less than 3 is greater than 0.95. And finally, once you solve that, you end up with PR of Y less than or equal to 2 is less than 0 0.05. So how do we use the inverse binomial on the calculator? You would go to menu, 5 for probability, and 5 for distributions. Now scrolling all the way down, you see two options, inverse binomial and inverse binomial n. Inverse binomial n is the command we'll be using this time. So you press inverse binomial n, and you see they ask you for three different things. So the cumulative probability, that is the probability that we have below our particular y value. As we've seen in our working, that cumulative probability was 0 0.05. The probability of success, as we saw before, was 0 0.12. And the number of successes, which is the upper bound of our particular scenario, was 2. You press Enter twice, and it comes up with 51. What that means is we want the least number of sample size to get the required probability is 51. If you'd like to check that answer and verify it for yourself, you can actually press the up arrow twice, press enter, press left, and press comma one. And that gives you a matrix. And what that matrix shows is that at, if you have a sample size of 50, the probability of getting at most two drivers without, uh, at least two people without a driver's license is 0 0.05. But we want that probability to be less than 0 0.05. So as you can see, when you increase your sample size to 51, you get a probability of 0 0.046, which is less than 0 